On the 16th of October 2015, in Galeta's village near Mandlovo, which is in Matebeleland, no, 16 year old Professor Ngube, it is his name, not his title, it's a Zimbabwean thing, was searching for stray cattle that he had lost deep in the forest when he stumbled upon a heap of loose soil, which he later discovered to be a shallow grave. When he called the villagers, who later called the police, they soon discovered that this was the body of 33 year old Judith Mulawudzi, who had been missing for the past three days. This story begins when Betty Mulawudzi sent her daughter Judith Mulawudzi, 33 years of age, to Bulawayo, which is approximately 49 kilometers from their village, to do a financial transaction on her behalf. Judith never made it home and Betty was a bit worried where her daughter was. At around 6 p.m., she became increasingly worried that Judith was not yet home, so she contacted her other daughter Tembi Mulawudzi to call Judith and check on her whereabouts. Her phone kept ringing, so they assumed that someone had stolen her phone and she would show up early the next morning. She never arrived the next day and Tembi decided to contact her boyfriend, Lenisela Sibanda, a 30-year-old from the same village, to ask him if he knew where his girlfriend was. Lenisela denied knowing her whereabouts and even volunteered to go around the village asking if they had seen his girlfriend. Three days went by and there was still no sign of the mother of three. Lenisela was also searching and trying by all means to find any information relating to the disappearance of his girlfriend. Unfortunately, on the 16th of October, they were contacted by the police and they confirmed their worst fears. The question on everyone's mind was who could have committed such a cruel and callous crime? When the detectives were looking for clues and questioning the villagers, they were pinpointed to her boyfriend, Klinisani Sibanda. Apparently, he was the last person to be seen with her alive on the 13th of October at around 6 p.m. This information was given to the police by his own cousin, Dudu Zimpala, and his two female friends, Linda Moyo and no getting poyo. These three people claimed that they had last seen Judith walking with her boyfriend on her way home at around 6 p.m. When the detectives heard this, they decided to pay him a visit at his homestead, but when they arrived, they discovered that he had fled that very day. This was a clear admission of a crime because why would you flee when you hear that your beloved had been found dead? Apparently, he had fled to Lopane because when the police traced her cell phone, it pinged in Lopane and it was in his possession. When he knew that the police were hot on his trail, he decided to hand himself over to the police. He then confessed in admitting to killing his girlfriend, burning her clothes and stealing her cell phone. He tried to blame provocation, claiming that they had met another man who had interest in her and she claimed that he was an ex who still wanted her but he did not believe her and there was a blowout and he struck her two times with an open hand and then a fist and she collapsed and died. He said that when he discovered that she had died, he was very afraid so he went home, took a shovel, dug a shallow grave, buried her, burnt her clothes, even hid the shovel in a bush of thorns and went home. He then spent five months in remand prison only to be tried at Wange High Court from the 11th to the 15th of March in 2016. In court, the prosecution did not believe his version of events because he claimed another man had caused their fight, but he could not describe the man or even identify him. So they believed that this man was a work of fiction. He clearly was fabricating the story in order to use provocation as a defense mechanism in court. She also had a skull bone fracture on the left frontal lobe, which was an indication of excessive force, not the story that he was trying to tell the court. This post-mortem result exposed just how substantial the violence that was inflicted upon her was and the kind of damage that was inflicted upon her could not have been done by his bare hands. His story did not add up and he could not exonerate himself by fabricating the truth. He clearly was being conservative with the truth in order to get a lesser sentence. According to the evidence in court, after killing her, he dug a shallow grave that was 80 centimeters deep and 2 meters long. After burying her, he then hid the shovel in a bush of thorns. Admire Sivan that his relative testified in court that he had indeed taken a shovel from their homestead at night on the 13th of October in 2015 and he believed that this is the shovel that he used to bury his girlfriend. The judge believed that he lied about another man because he had no valid reason why he had murdered her. He was too embarrassed to admit that. He had left Judas children without a mother, all because of trivial reasons. The judge Ibera then found him guilty of murder and sentenced him to 22 years in prison. He will only be released in 2036 when he is 51 years old. He threw away his youth and is languishing in prison, all because he could not control his temper. May this homicide foul be a lesson to all those that like to use violence to solve disputes and problems. This too could be you if you don't learn to control your temper. May her soul continue to 
rest in eternal peace.